Hi, in this video, we're going to be comparing standard render pipeline with the universal render pipeline. So a few months ago, we swapped over to the universal render pipeline and I'd been umming and ahhing for a, a fair part of time. Should we swap over to this? Because it's, it's not just, I mean, it's not super hard, but it is a little bit more than just a, a kind of like importing the universal render pipeline component. So I thought, you know what, I'll make a video saying what I do and don't like about it and all of those things and, and what kind of projects I think are better for changing to the universal render pipeline. Also, I'm going to kind of set up a bit of post-processing to show kind of where you can achieve a little bit more. Also, I'm going to go and point out some of the tricks to swapping over to the universal pipeline if that's what you choose to do. But there are some projects I do think are better suited to the standard render pipeline. And so we'll go through that as well. Anyway, if you're new about here, I would love a subscribe. That would help me out heaps. I'm trying to help people, but I'm making a game. So I'm, I wanna share some stuff around. So what I did is I imported and I made two new scenes. One was set up as a standard render pipeline. One was set up as a universal render pipeline. I added in a frame rate counter so we could see how much, what if we were getting any f performance issues. And I imported the same asset into both projects. The, the projects is called the low poly environment natural pack free. Now I've got a link down below if you want to go and check out. I think it's a pretty awesome little asset. First off, I went and just imported it into the standard scene, looked at it and we'll have a look around. It's It all runs pretty nice. There was, I, I think it looks really good out of the gate. And this is one thing that I found about the standard render pipeline is that everything kind of looks reasonably good straight out of the gate. You don't kind of have any issues. You don't have any shader problems as much. Everything's pretty much a nice looking scene. If you just want nice and you just want a simple looking scene, don't go to Universal Render Pipeline. That's not for you because you'll save some heartache. But then to put it into the Universal Render Pipeline, there was a whole lot of heartache and that started off with the the process of uh, well see this asset i chose this asset that we we talked about here because it had this uh it's got a nice feature of having its own shaders and stuff so you can just click here and bring in the universal Ven render pipeline version of this asset and away you go really cool so i just did that, kind of couldn't work out why everything was broken. And this is a process you'll go through. So straight up, I came up with a whole lot of errors. That was because I had to go into Unity and actually download the Universal Pipeline Renderer um, package that I hadn't done to this time you can start off with that in your build if you want to there's there's that option as well i didn't so i thought i'd do it the the harder way just to show you all the problems that you can get along the way so you did that then it's still not working because next you have to go into your settings and assign a, ren a pipeline renderer to it. You can't have a no pipeline renderer. So you have to go and create a renderer and then assign it. So that's another thing you've got to kind of do. Not hard, but something you've you just got to do. Yeah, Unity also has got this really cool thing where you can just go down in your settings here and swap all of your assets over to the universal render pipeline it will do it automatically for you so that's one thing worth looking at then i had a bit of mucking around to get the trees to come across because i hadn't got the right renderer 
I actually closed Unity and reopened Unity a couple of times through this process just to kind of install the render pack package properly. And yeah, it ended up working pretty good. It, you know, 10 minutes and you, you're going. So it wasn't all hard. And the, you can see the scene here and compared to the standard pipeline, I kind of think it looks worse and straight out the gate. So the advantage of going to the universal render pipeline is then adding the shaders and your post-processing. That If you're not doing that, don't even bother. Like, do not bother. So to go over and, uh, well, I thought, well, I might as well do the post-processing. And it, it's worth noting to now that everything pretty much the frame rates were very much the same. There was not a whole lot of change in the frame rates. They all stayed similar. I decided that if I'm going to do this test, I've, I've got to go and add some post-processing. It's not going to look like... I'm not setting this up 100% great. It's just I'm adding it so we can kind of see some performance issues that come along and how easy the post-processing is. So it's worth noting now that when you go into this, a standard pipeline, you have to add a post-processing package to a standard Unity build to be able to do post-processing. And it's a lot limited. It's a lot more limited than if you use your universal render pipeline so straight away you can see that big difference it kind of works a little bit different too if you're going to use a standard run render pipeline you have to drop your post processing onto your camera as opposed to dropping it into your scene so with the universal render pipeline you just right click in your scene and you can add a post processing a global post processing effect and away you go the same they've they are both very similar kind of things to do i i might do a post-processing video another time but basically very similar type things and i added about the same amount of post-processing components onto each of them very important to note that you have to in your universal render pipeline click on the camera you want the post-processing to appear on and check that you want post-processing on that camera or it will not post-process. This is where the universal render pipeline, you could notice a bit of a difference. Frame rate started to drop a little bit more on the standard render pipeline with the more post-processing effects that I added. And this is where, like I said at the start of this, if, if you want a standard little fun game standard render pipeline is the go if you want more control and you want to do bigger and better things then the universal render pipeline is worth looking at it is worth noting though it takes a lot of work to get a scene to look as nice as just a standard render pipeline You've, you've got a lot more mucking around. You're going to spend hours and hours setting up shaders and post-processing and all of those things that look really decent out of the gate on a standard render pipeline oh, for a small game. And that's where the kind of differentiator comes into it. There is a lot more learning going to a universal render pipeline but it's worth it in the end. I think <laughs> if you if you want to get that bit more out of your game and you get those, those special looking uh, bits and pieces that you didn't get from just a standard render pipeline. Look, we're pretty happy and we've gone across there to the universal render pipeline mostly because we wanted the shaders and the extra pros processing power that we can get. And... We need that for the game that we want to build. I, I hope this video helped someone kind of understand the difference between the two pipelines because it's 
kind of a bit blurred. Well, the internet's a big place, I guess. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Would love some comments on what you guys want to know more about. And thanks for watching this video.